Hey there YouTube, Travis here. Okay, so we're back with the ZA50. I'm thinking this will be the third and final video uh, of doing this motor up. Um, had to stop the last video. It's always funny, you kind of come to natural stopping points for these videos. Uh, you know, I went to go ahead and throw my Bing on here. And of course, I'm not working with an E50. I'm working with a ZA50, which either had a oil pump right here or uh, it's just a block off, uh, you know, block off plate that's permanently affixed to the motor. Um, just one cast piece, it looks like. Um, anyway, there's a hump here. And so when I went to go put my trusty 15 Bing on, it ain't happening. So of course there's solutions for this. This is a riser for the intake and the reeds. Treats, sells two heights. I bought the taller one, it's 20 millimeters. Um, we should be fine. Um, once again, when you're not thinking about working on a ZA50, these things just don't cross your mind. So we got it now, we'll go ahead and install it. The extra gaskets the Polini comes with will come into great use immediately. And of course, you'll need some taller Allens. Um, these are 30 millimeter in height, uh, M5 size. So we got four of them there. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing swapped out. We're already doing all the other fun stuff. The motor is back on, the kickstand is back on. Um, sizing up chains, cables, we'll do the exhaust, and then we should be able to start this thing up. Now that is much better. We've got some way better clearance here now and can actually get that carb on pretty easy. Quick shout out to Jesse at Serious Blasters Only for these nice uh, Polini fin dampeners. This should reduce some of the chatter and noise uh, on this cylinder. So ultimately for exhausts, I was looking at either the uh, Techno stock-like pipe with the 28 millimeter header, um, Techno Boss, or also an Astoral pipe. But we went with this. Uh, this is the Treats pipe. Uh, this came on the Pook Murray project, which may or may not have been parted out. Keep that a secret. Um, anyway, um, this pipe is gonna be great uh, in order to make it work had to do a little bit of welding. Kind of hard to see on the camera here, but I actually welded a washer um, on the end of the mount there. Uh, when I mocked up the pipe, that's where it wanted to rest, where it was nice and flat um, against the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, and it also has these really nice slots. So uh, I'm very confident about how this pipe is mounted and that I don't have any exhaust leaks, which is great. Also, if you can't tell, I uh, did the DIY pedal extension here. Um, nothing fancy, just a spare pook crank welded. Um, there's no, no real magic there. Um, I did have to still, even with the double um, pedal arms, uh, have to bend the pipe just a little bit. But uh, it clears real nice now, so happy with this. And of course, would not be a rebuild without having to pull something apart again. So the entire transmission went ahead and took it apart. It really gets easier and faster the more you do it. Um, when I reassembled, my issue I had was that the spring I actually had resting right in here, like in this picture. Uh, what that resulted in was too much tension on this plastic starter mechanism, and this wouldn't pull. But now, this actually rotates. So this plastic piece will rotate out, make contact with the starter plate, and it should have a working uh, starter. <laughs> it should actually be able to start it. So we'll go ahead and move on and get ready to run this thing. So I'm kind of glossing over some things here, uh, but the front wheel also needed a lot of love, just like the rear wheel. Um, there was some slime in the tube. So got a new tube, keeping the tire that it came with because it's modern. Uh, the front wheel bearings uh, were a real mess, just like the rear. Um, there's really no fudging it when you are working on a 40 plus year old vintage moped, especially when you're modifying, you got to go through it, do the, you know, at least check the brakes, clean them up, um, grease the pivot point, do the wheel bearings, uh, just to keep yourself safe. Cause these really, really needed it. Um, and fun fact, uh, when I got all the cables on the rear, uh, brake was not very good. And I went back and watched my video, and it turns out that when someone took apart that wheel at one point, they didn't put the horseshoe spring uh, back in the brakes. And as I was doing them, because it wasn't there, I was, wasn't even thinking about it. Um, 
So yeah, it's missing the uh, return spring. So of course the brakes are not very good. Pads have plenty of meat on them though. But um, you can't buy that spring individually, so we got a nice set of uh, replacement brake shoes for it. All right, let's get going. Starter clutch cable time. So uh, good instructions for the manual for this. I am here for my third time, because the first time I had the spring uh, that is part of the plastic starter mechanism in the wrong slot. So tore everything apart again, got that corrected. Uh, the next time, uh, it actually turned out that the adjuster nut, the long adjuster nut, was not actually threaded uh, properly. It was like cross-threaded a smidge, um, took everything apart, found that out, got it all back together, and here we are. So, again, uh, this mechanism is pretty simple when you've taken it apart a couple times, but the first time, it's kind of intimidating. Uh, I'm going to do the adjustment as per the manual recommendation. So we've got the cable itself uh, totally unhooked, uh, and then... Right here, this is a replacement cable from Treats that has the slightly larger NARP on the end. It fits down in the adjuster nut uh, just fine. So, uh, per the manual, you rotate this to the right, so you tighten it. Um, again, I'm leaving the very bottom one that is the 17 millimeter nut screwed all the way into the case. Um, and then this is an 11 millimeter adjuster. So it says turn it inwards, and I actually have to use the wrench to turn it in until just merely doing the pedals uh, starts to turn the engine over. So it says to then make a mark so that you have a reference. So I'm going to do that with the Sharpie. And then turn it six times out, uh, six full rotations out for a brand new starter clutch, which like, <laughs> who has that? Um, or uh, seven times for a good used one, which I think will pretty much be everybody watching this video. So unless you stumble across some rare new old stock gold. So we'll go ahead and do that. So now I'm just gonna snug this one down. This very top one is a 10 millimeter. Snug this one up, up here, just get it snug. And now, that's what we want. Well, that was not running very well. I basically only had uh, power under quarter to half throttle. Everything else was real wonky and it definitely died on me out there at one point. Uh, but this was the first time taking the bike out. It was really exciting to get it going. And now we'll have one more video in the series for tuning the Polini uh, to get this thing running right. Um, in that video, we'll be fighting the three monsters that you must face if you want a well-tuned moped. Uh, we'll start by tackling air leaks, and if you have a keen eye, you can see the head is off. I've already started looking at one. Um, we'll look at timing, which I just eyeballed just to get this bike running, uh, but we can definitely do better. And then we'll also look at uh, jetting the carb and uh, making some other modifications, because while I believe this is a genuine Bing, uh, it came out of a parts bin, and I did not put it together originally. It's got some wonky parts in it. I know it's got a 2.15 atomizer in it out of a Bingzilla, the 17 millimeter Bing, which is probably a little lean for it. But we'll be playing with that and some other parts and we will get this thing right. So I uh, hope you're enjoying the series. Until next time.